Hi everyone, this is Franco with Wisdify, and in this video, we're going to be unveiling the five most powerful data analysis functions in Excel that every accounting and finance professional should master. These functions are game changers, and they help you uncover insights, streamline processes, and make data-driven decisions like a pro. Let's dive in. So our first one on the list is something that you might be familiar with if you are already proficient in PowerPoint, this is pivot tables. Pivot tables, we use to quickly summarize data in the blink of an eye. I'm going to be illustrating this using a data set called sales for the day. And what we're going to be doing here is maybe we want to summarize the quantity that we were able to sell for each product, each region and maybe even each sales rep. So to do that, we don't have to put down separate tables here and use functions like sum ifs. Those are really great. But if you're trying to save time, there is a really strong function in the form of pivot tables right here. So what you have to do to put a pivot table in, if you saw what I just did, again, I click insert and then I highlighted the data that I wanted to summarize. And then finally I click on pivot table. If you click on pivot table, it's going to ask you what table or range you want to summarize. We've already done that. And it's going to ask you where you want to see this pivot table. We're going to click on new worksheet so that we'll add a new worksheet where we can create our pivot table from scratch. So if you want to summarize the quantity sold per sales rep, that's something that you can do. If you want to summarize my product instead, that's fine as well. My region, as you can see with just a few clicks, I'm already making meaningful summarizations in just a few seconds, right? And this isn't the only thing that you can do. You can even break down, let's say, for example, we want to see the sales per product, but we also want to see an additional breakdown per region. You can actually have some sort of a matrix here, right? We put the region in the columns and the product as the rows. And you can see that there were two laptops sold in the North region, seven in the West region for a grand total of nine laptops sold throughout the country. Isn't that amazing? So that is the power of pivot tables. Now. The second function we're going to be talking about is a bit more complicated and it's power query. Power query is already in Excel and you don't need to download anything for it to show up. So all you have to do to use our power query is you highlight the items again, that you want to clean up. And what you want to do here is you go into data and this whole section here will help you get and transform data. So that's what Power Query is great at. Power Query is best when you want to automate the cleansing and loading of data. So what does Power Query look like? Once you get into your get data, you can get data from multiple sources. And you can actually get them from folders as well. Or if you specify that you want to extract data from a folder, it actually gets all of the data from all of the files in that folder. If you want to check this out, we can use that. And I want to specify that I'm going to be getting data from a folder in or a folder called for combination. So what's going to happen here is it's going to, it's going to load all of the files in that folder. It found two files and you can actually combine those two and just load them directly. So do you see what happened? It's going to ask you if what it's showing you is correct. And if we say, yeah, that is the right structure I want for my data. It's going to copy that. And now I have my transaction ID and my amounts from two different files. Isn't that cool? So that's one really amazing thing that you can do with Power Query. 
you can pull in data from multiple files into one Excel sheet. But the beauty of Power Query isn't just with that. So let's go back to our sales data set. If we go into our sales data set and we use that as the data for our query, you're going to be able to see multiple ways that you can clean this data up, right? So if you want to, so the normal stuff that comes with Excel is also here. You can sort, you can filter, but there are additional functions you can use. Like you can actually remove duplicates. You can add new columns here. You can split columns by delimiters, positions, if they're uppercase or lowercase and so on and so forth. So Power Query has all of these tools to clean up your data in an instant. And the beauty of Power Query isn't just the cleanup. It's the fact that this cleanup becomes automated. So you can save this query that you have and you can actually use it over and over again for different files. Say for example, the folder that we used a while ago, I'm just going to demonstrate that real quick. So I'll discard and close this. And we have this folder right here where we combine file one and file two, right? So I go back to this and let's say that I make a file three. And once I go in there, I add new transactions, right? Now, the thing is, this is an entirely new file and you might think, okay, now I have to do my query all over again. If you put in special instructions on how to clean up this data before loading it into Excel, it's going to do that all the time that you press refresh. So you don't have to keep going back and inputting those functions, right? Again, all we had to do was click refresh and it automatically brought our files in. Okay. So that's power query. And the next function that we'll actually be talking about is a wonderful function called Power Pivot. So Power Pivot is actually more of a hidden tool. It is an add-in in Excel that you have to find and enable manually. So where Pivot Table was used to summarize data and Power Query was used to automate the loading, the extraction, cleanup, and loading of data into Excel. Power Pivot is actually used to create relationships between different data sets to make summarization even more powerful. You can call it pivot tables on steroids. That's why we call it Power Pivot. I'm going to go back to my data set and I'm going to show that to you. We have here the sales for the day, but if you look closely, you can only see the quantity, right? How about the unit price and the total sales for that? So we actually have that in a different table called inventory listing. We have the item and the corresponding price. Of course, we don't have the total sales because that's something that we have to compute. What we're going to do here is first, if you want to enable power pivot, you have to go into options. So again, how did we get to options? I'll do that again for you. We go to file. We click options down here in the bottom left. And then what we do here is we want to make sure that we go into our add-ins and we want to make sure that we can enable all of the add-ins that we need. So we have here multiple add-ins. We're actually going to use a few of them later, the analysis tool back and solver. So those are in the Excel add-ins to add them, just click go and you can just so they on the check marks to have them on Excel. So I already have them, but we don't need that. What we need for this specific topic is our power pivot. And it's not an Excel add-in. It's actually called a com add-in. So we click this drop down list and click com add-ins instead, and click go. And we have to make sure that power pivot is enabled. Once that's okay, just press okay. And you should see Power Pivot up here. So now, how do we use Power Pivot? Power Pivot is used by creating relationships between different data sets. So one thing that you can do to get yourself inside Power Pivot is to highlight the data set that you want to use and you click add to data model and that should show up in Power Pivot. 
just like in Power Query, you'll have the option to add a column. It's much easier here because you don't need to click a separate function in the ribbon. But one thing that you can do here is you can go back to Excel and you can click on the other data set that you want to use and click add to data model as well. And in here, now we have both tables and are they related to each other? Kind of, because you have product in the sales table and you have item, which also corresponds to the product in our inventory listing table. So now we want to rename this just to make sure that we're not going to be confused later on. This is inventory listing. And on the other hand, we have sales, right? What we're going to do here is we're going to go into our diagram view up here. So just click that. And the beauty with Power Pivot is now you can make relationships between different data sets at the click of a button, but not really just a click. You have to drag two. So a while ago, we said that product in the sales table is the same as the item in the inventory listing. And now we click and drag. And now these tables are actually linked together. And once we go back to our data view, we can add our total sales column now. So we can say total sales. And what we're going to do here is we want to be able to compute our total sales and we know that that is our quantity. So you put equals and then you press. You want to add this to the unit price from inventory listing. Now, how do you do that? This is a whole different set of formulas from Excel because this is actually DAX, right? It's the formula or the language for formulas used here in Power Pivot and in Power BI. This might be something that you want to learn separately. But in this video, we're just going to show you the tables. We're just going to show you the formulas already. And once we click related, it's actually going to show us all of the columns in the other table. So we have item and price. What do we want to multiply the quantity by? It's price. So we select that and we close this off. And now, as you can see, total sales is now filled out the way that we want it to be. So is this all that Power Pivot can do? Absolutely not. Now you can put all of this data into a pivot table. And mind you, this pivot table isn't just using one data set now. If you look to your right, you can see that it has the power to use all of the data in our Excel file at once. But for this to work properly, you have to define relationships back in our diagram view. For now, we've been able to establish the relationship between inventory listing and sales. So we'll use that. So for our products, we can specify the total sales now. And again, this is a computation that is using both of these tables. Isn't that awesome? Maybe I want to replace product with item from this table. That's fine as well. I get the same result because we've linked them lawless. So that's it for Power Pivot. The next function that we're actually going to be talking about is the solver tool. So what is the solver tool? You know, how can we use this? So solver is actually really cool because it can help us find the best solution in different scenarios that we have to face. So let me just show you how it does that exactly. Now, again, I have a different data set on screen. It should be an income statement. And let's say, for example, that I have to create my income statement using all of this data. So I have my formulas here for revenue. I have to multiply sales volume by selling price. Cost of goods sold is linked here. So it's multiplied by sales volume as well to get total cost of goods sold. So I'm sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. This should be an asterisk. Total cogs, we know that it's 150. Our gross profit is simply our revenue minus our total cost of goods sold. And now our gross profit margin is the gross profit divided by revenue. Now, how can we use solver? You can go back into data 
and you can find solver right here. So what happens here is if I want to make my gross profit margin change, I have to look at the factors that I can influence in order to change gross profit margin. So to do that really quickly, instead of having to do trial and error, you can use solver tour instead. So if you've defined your constraints and you're sure that you can only sell 5,000 this year and you can't raise your price higher than 60, the only thing that you can influence now is the cost of goods sold per order. So what we're going to do here is we want to click solver up here and we want to make sure that we can increase this to a value that we want. So we're setting this as our objective and we want to change this to around 70%, right? To get it to 70%, we want to change the cost of the sold per order here in cell 09. And once we're good with that, we can just click solve. And what Solver is going to do is it's going to find the best answer. Now it has done its job and it tells us that for us to achieve a gross profit margin of 70%, we have to have cost of goods sold per order of only $18. That's powerful if you ask me. So that's it for Solver. Our final data analysis tool that we're going to be discussing today is the analysis tool pack. Now, maybe you're bridging away from the accounting side and you have to create insights using statistical models or statistical tools. You don't have to download a separate application to do that. Once you have the analysis tool pack enabled, you should be able to see it under the data tab in your ribbon. And it, it's going to be the data analysis function over here. So let's, let's say, for example, we have our data pop it in here. What you're going to do is highlight your data, go to data analysis, and the data analysis tool pack actually has a lot of statistical functions that it will do automatically for you, right? So for example, if you want to do a correlation analysis, we click on that. So it's actually going to ask us to put in our input range and it's going to do all of those statistical functions for us. All right. So that's really amazing that that's already inside of Excel. And that's actually the last function that we're going to discuss. Now, I hope this video helped you. And there you have it, guys. The five most powerful data analysis functions in Excel that can supercharge your work in accounting and finance. So whether it's saving time or unlocking deeper insights, these tools are the key to working smarter and not harder. So don't forget to like and share and subscribe to Wisdify for more tips and tricks to keep you ahead of the curve. Stay sharp, keep innovating, and let's make those spreadsheets work for you. Until next time, have a great day.